For upfront therapy at this time, the way we would monitor these patients is at baseline, we would do a, um, a bone marrow analysis along with peripheral blood, and we usually get uh, cytogenetics in addition to a RT-PCR for BCR able. And then we would be following these patients every three months for a clinical evaluation. And we usually follow with a peripheral blood uh, cytogenetics as well as uh, RT-PCR for BCR able. We do it every three months for about one year. And then we drop it to once every uh, six months uh, for the next two years. And then we usually go to once a year. Some of the areas that are still under discussion and it is not clear yet is whether we should be looking at mutational analysis uh, at the baseline. Uh, there are some data showing that even in chronic phase CML, some patients may have baseline molecular mutations such as uh, T315I or E255K, which may make them resistant to particular TKIs and make us select others. However, the incidence seems to be small, anywhere between 2 to 4 percent. And so based on this, at this time, it's not in the standard guidelines to do baseline tyrosine kinase inhibitors. So I think the standard would be baseline cytogenetics RT-PCR every three months, cytogenetics and RT-PCR for the first year, and then after that every six months uh, for two years, and then after that once a year. The definition of early molecular response comes from uh, several trials that has performed in most of them in frontline um, treatment of CML with even uh, first generation or second generation TKI and really um, look for the obtention of the achievement of less than 10% of PCR by uh, PCR testing by uh, in PCR testing with international on an international scale. This um, early molecular response definition of uh, less than 10% is being adopted by NCCN and also by other uh, guidelines like a ELN as a, as a cutoff, as a threshold for which we can consider which patients are going to do better or worse. It's no doubt that there's always um, a small number of patients who may be in a gray zone. I'm talking about a small percentage of patients who may not achieve this early molecular response at three months, but maybe they achieve at six months. However, it's very clear that patients who are not achieve early molecular response at three months, they may be at higher risk of transformation later on. And of course, this mostly is associated with the so-called score, it means that less than, or a, a lack of obtention of less than 10% by a PCR at three months in a high-risk patient is a very, very important red flag that we need to consider and really discuss to change of therapies. Obtention of EMR at three months is a very important milestone in the treatment of patients uh, with CML under tyrosine kinase inhibition. The goal is to really get all patients or most of our patients of less than 10%. However, we know that there is a certain amount of patients who may not achieve these uh, less than 10% PCR. This is not a magic uh, number. I think we need to be flexible as uh, the new NCCN guidelines, uh, you know, state. And sometimes it's not really a black and white situation. Maybe it's a gray situation in certain areas where we may be worth it to repeat the PCR to really make sure that these goals are not achieved at three months. However, as I mentioned before, uh, if I have a patient who definitely did not achieve these less than 10% and is being uh, started in a uh, first generation TKI and maybe an intermediate high risk is the kind of patient or is the patient where really will be very, very fast considering switching therapy early on because in my opinion are the patient who may have higher risk of transformation in the first year. Additional mutational testing in, in CML is uh, an area of kind of evolution. We're not 100% sure of the exact timing. In general, I think the accepted gu guidelines or accepted time points to do the uh, additional mutation analysis are if there is a patient who's having a increase in his RT-PCR for PCR able, especially if it is confirmed on two consecutive analysis. So for example, if I see a patient in clinic who had been on desatinib for seven, eight years, and he had achieved a major molecular response. Uh, however, when he comes to see me, let's say his PCR levels have gone up to 0 0.5 or 0 0.6. We usually would not uh, clinically act on that at this time. I would probably bring him back after a month or six weeks and repeat it. 
if the repeat confirms that his uh, PCR for BCR able level remains at 0 0.5, 0 0.6, or even goes up, then I would add on a uh, mutation testing to see if the reason he's losing the response to dasatinib is because of uh, acquisition of a secondary mutation that causes resistance. One important thing to consider in this scenario is to always uh, take a very good history and uh, make sure that the patient is actually compliant on the medication because what we have learned in CML that one of the main reasons for treatment failure, in fact the main reason for treatment failure, is not really acquisition of resistant mutations but is actually uh, compliance and often patients after many years uh, will start um, missing a few doses or stopping it. This has been shown for other drugs such as tamoxifene and breast cancer where almost 70 to 75 percent of patients when they were uh, screened uh, did own up that they had actually stopped or started interrupting medications after five years. Um, so in that situation, if the patient does say he has been very compliant or at least 95 percent compliant and his PCR is going up, I would check for a resistant mutation. And the other scenario is, of course, if there's a clear morphological progression to a blast phase or accelerated phase. So if a patient comes back to me and he has now bone marrow or peripheral blasts that are above 5 percent, or if he's having uh, enlarging spleen, uh, worsening anemia, thrombocytopenia, uh, or other changes in his blood counts, white count, then I would definitely uh, repeat a PCR for BCR able but do a mutational testing at that time because we have seen that the time of progression from chronic phase to blast, accelerated phase, or to Philadelphia positive AML, there is often acquisition of secondary mutations that could drive resistance and could help us select um, the appropriate TKI. And the third scenario where we would consider it is in newly diagnosed accelerated phase, blast phase, or uh, AML with a Philadelphia positive mutation. And it has been shown that in the newly diagnosed patients who come in the more advanced phases of CML, almost between 5 or 15 percent of them could harbor a baseline resistant mutation. And uh, identification of that mutation may help us select TKIs that uh, work and are, and are not going to be resistant. In a patient who's been in a complete molecular remission, if the transcript levels become detectable on a routine surveillance follow-up PCR for BCR-ABLE, uh, the first thing we would do is repeat a, a PCR for BCR-ABLE, usually with an interval of somewhere between three to six weeks. Um, there can be minor small fluctuations in these levels because the PCR for BCR-ABLE is a very sensitive test. So we usually will not make any changes based on one uh, increased value. But on two subsequent values, if we do see that the uh, transcript levels are going up, and especially if they have uh, come up above 0 0.1, then that would be an indication for consideration of switching to another TKI after making sure that the patient has been compliant at the appropriate dose.